Well, good afternoon, everybody. We're ready to start again. So if you come up and gather and sit around. We are now videotaping, so if anybody's in the Witness Protection Program, make sure to keep your back to the cameras. <laughs> well, welcome back, everybody. It gives me great pleasure to introduce friends here that I've known for minutes. <laughs> I like that. The Bullard Brothers, who's going to talk about the Florida Folk Festival, a little bit of its history, and have, hopefully answer any questions you might have about the Florida Folk Festival. So with that, I'm going to get out of the way. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Jerry Lawrence Bullard. Uh, Elaine McGrath couldn't be here today, so Gloria asked me to, uh, before we get started about our presentation about the Florida Folk Festivals, is to uh, inform you a little bit about Stephen Foster's Citizen Support Organization, the CSO, and how we're involved with the festival. Uh, Citizen Support Organization started at Stephen Foster in 1989. Since that time, we have been actively involved in promoting uh, the Florida Folk Festival. Some of you may know or may not know uh, that we have funds set aside through fundraising efforts, uh, generous contributions to keep and support the Florida Folk Festival. Uh, one thing that we've discussed in the past uh, year is way are ways to uh, continue to promote funds to help the festival. Uh, for you that have been there in the past uh, three or four years, we started a beer garden there. And uh, we're in the Bible Belt up, up in North Florida, so uh, that was a little bit controversial. Uh, but anyway, it's, uh, everybody's bought into that. It's, uh, I think it's been a huge success. Uh, it's um, very uh, a good place to set up and have a cool beer and listen to the music at the, at the main stage, whether you drink or whether you don't. So that was one, one way that we've been helping to support the festival. One thing that we talked about, and uh, we're going to continue to talk about this year, uh, if you were there, if you were at the festival two or three years ago, we had a washout. It rained every day, which I wish it would do again, <laughs> just not at the festival because we desperately need the water out there. But uh, uh, a friend of mine uh, encouraged and asked if I had thought about this, and for you folks that have been in promotion, I know a lot of you have here, about event insurance in case you have a washout. And, you know, we only have two or 3,000 people to come up to the festival. So that's something that we're going to look at this year is uh, event insurance in case we have, uh, one year we had uh, a huge fire up there. And then, of course, if it rains for three days, it really affects our number. Uh, but the Citizen Sport Organization in White Springs, uh, one thing that we have committed to is uh, earmark money specifically for the Florida Folk Festival. If um, you didn't know that, if we don't come up with a certain amount of money that we break even or make money at the festival, we have funds set aside to uh, make sure that happens. As a matter of fact, those funds are utilized and used before uh, we ever get our money from Tallahassee to fund the festival. We have 60, 000, about $60,000 in our uh, account to, uh, to help fund the Florida Folk Festival. And we're going to continue as a board as long as I'm there, I'm hoping we'll continue to do this, is to, to make sure those funds are set aside for that event. We do a lot of other things for the park and to help support the park, but um, a lot of those monies were given by people um, that want to continue the Florida Folk Festival. And uh, I, was, I was talking to somebody the other day, if there's ever been a time that this country needs the arts and music and uh, crafts and art, I think it's now. And so we need to continue to support that as a group. Um, we do several events throughout the year other than the Florida Folk Festival. Um, we just had a festival of lights up there in December. We had 35,000 people to come through Stephen Foster. So that was a huge success uh, for us as a group to help fund that. Uh, so the Citizen Sport Organization, uh, if you don't know, we've got a website We'll, uh, we'll also be there this year at the festival. We have a booth there that you can come by and get literature, a uh, website that you can go on to um, for all the uh, people that do the computer thing. I try not to do a lot of that, but I do some. 
um, ongoing events we have there throughout the year to help promote music and uh, what we do. We have a coffee house there once a month. Uh, the first Saturday of every month is open mic for you folks that get up to White Springs or want to get away. Uh, it's a beautiful time to get up there and, and um, sing and, and we have a good time at the coffee house. So um, avail yourself to do that. Um, that's the gist of what I have. Elaine uh, had some information and I talked to Gloria a little bit about this. There are some fund uh, raising efforts uh, through se the, the sales of t-shirts and things of that nature to help promote the festival. And I don't have a lot of information about that. Uh, probably would call the park staff to ask about that to uh, help fund the festival. There has been, a, again, privy to some information coming from Tallahassee uh, about cutting some, type, some grants that help fund stages at the festival. Um, so we're, we're still involved with trying to get uh, monies from the local TDCs and those areas um, to, to help fund the festival. But there are certain grants that have been cut from state budgets that help fund certain stages at the festival. So uh, there's a lot of things that uh, behind the scenes that are happening right now in Tallahassee that uh, have, have affected our budget as far as things that we do is at the festival. But that's, that's privy more to Elaine and her staff, but uh, Citizen Sport Organization at Stephen Foster uh, are, are, are still involved in helping try to raise money and use ideas to do so. Um, I had some you know, questions and concerns about certain things about as far as CD, CD sales through the fall tent uh, and that kind of thing. Some of that money goes to, to the CSO and you know, what's the possibility that we may do something with that and that's something that we'll be open to. So if, if you don't feel comfortable about, about asking, a question, uh, asking questions in an open mic form, see me afterwards. I would be open at any time. Uh, to talk about that if you have questions about the citizen support organization or anything that you'd like to ask I'd be uh, open to that in, in discussion with that but if you're not a member again this is a sales pitch Gloria mm -hmm. if you're not a member of the Stephen Foster CSO it is a way that you can help to continue to promote the festival and other events at Stephen Foster in White Springs so uh, does anybody have any questions about the CSO or anything that I may uh, answer at this time. Uh, my brother Johnny Buller to the left it was a founding member of that. He was involved for years with the CSO and uh, kind of there's a lot of people in that community that really have a love for the park and what they're doing there with, uh, with not only the Florida Folk Festival but with helping preserve uh, the Stephen Foster Park and the, the, uh, the beauty of that area. Uh, again there's so many things outside the parks that a lot of people don't know if you get up to the big shows, uh, State Park north of White Springs, just a beautiful area that C Stephen Foster CSO is involved in. We do things with that area too. So it's just not privy to the Stephen Foster Park there. Uh, it, there's areas outside there too that we're involved in. So uh, if that helps, that helps a lot with those areas outside the park and keeping those up. Anybody got any questions? Yes, ma'am. I do. Does, does the CSO up there um, have a specific person working on grant writing? We don't. Uh, we have talked about that. That's another thing that we've talked about. Uh, grant writing, uh, again, it, that is a, uh, something that we, uh, the last two or three meetings that the board met on, that we thought about doing some grant writing to try to get some outside interest to help um, in promoting the festival. and. Uh, we do have some private um, uh, organizations that do give monies to that, um, to, the, to the festival, but that's something that we had thought about maybe hiring a grant writer to do something like that. So yes, that is an idea that we've discussed. We haven't in the past, uh, but that's something that we're really open to and have, and have talked about that, uh, hiring somebody to do that. There are two grants up there that they, for which they apply that almost write themselves. One is to the Tourist Development Councils that they have there in Hamilton County and over in Columbia who support with dollars. Then the second one is done really through the Department of State in the name of the CSO that funds the folk life area itself there. And those are funded by the Department of State or have been on an annual basis. And sometimes uh, the organization that publishes the magazine Forum, the Florida Humanities Council, 
they have provided funds for the folk festival through grants that basically are written by people at the Department of State. So he's right. There's nobody on staff there who actually writes grants. When we get into the history of the folk festival, we'll talk a little bit about this too. Uh, for years, there were folk, uh, folk, folklorists there that we had on staff. We don't have that anymore. And to answer uh, and to just emphasize on what Johnny was talking about with the uh, grants coming up, coming out of Tallahassee, the one that uh, funded the folk life area, that grant, uh, as of uh, a couple of months ago, had been cut. So we're looking at funds and ways to, uh, to raise money to help uh, fund that. And that may be through the CSO again. We're, we talked about that in the last meeting. It, it's, and it's around twelve to $15,000 mm -hmm. just to fund that one area for folk life and to, uh, whatever area of the state that we promote at that time. Um, various places throughout the state we'll, we'll uh, look at those and see but hopefully um, we'll come up with some more funding for that and uh, continue to do that because that's a, a big part of the festival not only the music I, I, I tell people and I talked to Carl last year about this too for a performer and Thomas emphasized Mindy that it's just a cool time for us to get together and do our music and stuff but there's a lot of things other than the music that we need to promote about this state and um, We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into the festival part. But the CSO again is is really involved and and will continue to be involved. Uh, when that was established, the CSO was established. It was established. One sp specific thing was we wanted to help promote the Florida Folk Festival, and um, it's it's an on, ongoing thing, folks. Throughout the years, we've just got to keep keep the, uh, that torch lit and, and make sure people are buying into that. It, uh, it's the oldest uh, state-run folk festival in the United States. Wow. So uh, we need to continue to try to do that. Uh, and hopefully we can. Uh, we've Again, we've got money that we're not going to touch for anything else other than for the Florida Folk Festival. That's, a, that's in a trust account. The CSO has that, so we're going to continue to keep that there. Any more questions about that? That's right. Sometimes they when Elaine would come here, uh, she would talk about the theme of the festival, each, mm -hmm. each year's theme, and then the headliners that she'd signed up. I don't know if that's done yet or not. We'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about, and, and when we get into the, the, the festival part about headliners, and um, I, I don't exactly know the theme yet, Tom. She's told me that, and it slipped my mind, but anyway. Martha, you have it, Gloria. Okay, and we'll talk about that when we get into the festival. Um, but. Again, CSO, we're going to talk, we're going to start about the festival here in just a second. Gloria wanted me to talk a little bit about the CSO, but I'm going to, I'm going to give the mic over to my brother. We're going to give you a little bit of history about the Florida Folk Festival, and then uh, we'll go from there. 